So I'm scrolling through Instagram the other day and I see this watch I'd never seen before and it was super photogenic. I look a little further and I realize it's a micro brand. Well, you know what that means. It's time for an impulse buy. Hey guys, I'm Max and welcome back to Hope Once. So today we're looking at the new Aster & Banks Fortitude. Aster & Banks is a Chicago-based micro brand that's been making some interesting affordable timepieces. And for the Fortitude, they claim that it's based on traditional officer watch design. When I first saw this watch, what I immediately noticed was just a lot of date just DNA. And since I own a modern date just, I thought, let's give the watch an impossible task and put it up against something 10 times its price. So today we're asking the question, what's the difference between a $600 watch and a $6,000 watch? What value points are you getting from the former and what are you missing out on? We're gonna break down this conversation into four major categories. The first of which is design. Both watches take a similar approach to their dial design with stick hour markers and hands. Though the Fortitude is going for more of a rugged look with nearly all brushed surfaces. This Husky Persona is brought out further on the green canvas strap included in the box, which suits the fine grain texture found on its dial. I do appreciate the symmetry afforded by carving the date window out of the six o'clock marker, as well as the attention to detail of not eliminating the entire index while doing it. This is the sand color option of the four offered, which I find the most interesting. It's not as stern as a silver dial, but also not as dainty as a salmon colored one either. In contrast, the date just is quite a bit more refined, especially on this Jubilee bracelet. With flowing lines and polished surfaces, the date just takes itself just a bit more seriously and is therefore more limited in terms of its versatility. Now, obviously design is very subjective and beauty is oftentimes in the eye of the beholder. The Rolex is gorgeous, but some might even prefer the more daring design of a micro brand because it's not beholden to a century of references. Now, the second category we're gonna talk about is components because on paper, the Fortitude checks off a lot of boxes. By the numbers, the Fortitude can be considered over-engineered. It features a scratch-resistant sapphire crystal, 660 feet of water resistance thanks to a screw-down crown, and soft iron plates that sandwich the movement to give it anti-magnetic properties. Swiss Superluminova affords it long-lasting luminescence. In terms of dimensions, the watch comes in a restrained 38.5 mm case. This case is kept thin at just under 12 millimeters and has a lug to lug of 46. The movement here is the tried and true Miyota 9015, though this is not a pretty thing to look at and is rather industrial and utilitarian, it does help to keep the case thin with its short stature. The Miyota has all the requisite features such as hacking, hand winding, and a 42 hour power reserve the Rolex 3135, on the other hand, is anything but pedestrian. It boasts technologies such as a free sprung balance and a parachrome hairspring, which is essentially unaffected by magnets. And being a superlative chronometer, the Datejust has an error rate calculated within two seconds on either side of true, versus up to 30 in the Miyota. Do me a big favor, head down there and give this video a thumbs up if you like it so far. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps. So when we solely look at these two categories of design and components, you can see somebody wondering why there's such a vast price difference. But when we discuss intangibles like history is where we see the Rolex pull ahead. 
With microbrands, we usually get a tale of the intrepid watch enthusiast who ventures into the world of watchmaking because of an aspiring vision. And for Astor and Banks, named after a Chicago street corner where founder Andrew Perez lives, the story is similar. Writing on the success of its 2019 Sea Ranger, a robust and colorful modern diver, the Fortitude was a second, more dressy follow-up in 2020. Big Green, of course, needs no introduction. Founded in 1905 by Hans Wilsdorf, the company weathered the quartz crisis and grew to be the world's most recognizable watch brand. The Oyster Perpetual Datejust alone holds multiple titles, including the first waterproof wristwatch and the first automatic watch with a date window, showing you the date just in time, hence Datejust. Adding to its cachet, the Datejust has adorned the wrist of a who's who of stars and dignitaries, a version of the day date even dubbed the president for that very reason. I'm sorry, microbrands, but there is no contest here. Finally, we get to category four, which is fit and finish. Because in a picture, a watch might look photogenic or striking, but when you spend months and years with it, you begin to notice all the small details. The bracelet is often skimped on in cheaper watches and thus a good place to see how much attention has been paid to the details. This is not to say that the Astor & Banks bracelet is subpar. It has thin and flat comfortable links that are adjustable using screws. But the iconic Rolex Jubilee is just on another level. Round edges are soft and hard edges are sharp. You can almost imagine the Rolex being made in a hermetically sealed lab by people in white coats and a floor so clean you can eat off of. The Fortitude does claw back some points with its striking gunmetal hands and a recessed ring around the inner dial. There are even two lug holes so that your strap doesn't leave a gap when mounted to the watch case. But perhaps my biggest misgiving for the Fortitude is this case shape. The case back protrudes quite a bit, and this along with straight lugs lifts the watch off the wrist and gives you that unsettling rocking chair effect. You might have better luck if your wrist is chunkier, otherwise it's a handsome offering from an endearing brand. So I've really enjoyed wearing the Astor & Banks Fortitude. I think it's one of those watches that can do both formal and casual really well. Now does it stack up to a $6,000 Datejust? Not quite, but if you're shopping at below the $1,000 mark, I think it's definitely worth a look. What do you think? Would you shell out for a Datejust or save 90% of it and rock a Fortitude? Let me know in the comments below. Now, you might be wondering, what is that shirt that Max is wearing? Don't worry, this is not going to become a channel where I hawk merchandise. But I also get these funny watch memes and I put them on t-shirts just to see who else gets the joke. If you're interested in one, head over to hopeones.shop to pick one up for yourself. So thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.